So this weekend I'm putting in a 1200 gallon IBC tote water harvesting system here. So I, each one of these IBC totes is 300 gallons. I have two here and I have two out front. These two here need to be cleaned out. They had a preservative for sausage. So I want to wash that out thoroughly. So I'll do that. The two out up front have been cleaned out. Last weekend I had gutters put in on my garage. So this is a 24 by 51 foot garage. So I have gutters coming down each side. So the plan is to up top, I uh, put a diverter in. So I'll have, for winter, I'll have a, uh, the downspout still here. So the water will go out there. And then I'm gonna have another pipe running next to it, which will have multiple filters in it to filter out any crap or anything so that it doesn't end up inside of the IBC totes. So I'm hoping to get the totes and everything rinsed, leveled on a, a spot here, all the filters in and fill up with water. And they're calling for rain this next week, so hopefully I'll get a, a good start on this if I could get everything rinsed off. So I need 1,200 gallons here because I have four propagation beds here. You can see the first one has a couple winter cuttings that are leafed out pretty good. But once we get a little further into summer, I'm going to have to have an intermittent mist system, which is going to use a good bit of water over here. And then on the other side of the garage there, actually, let me take a walk over this way. I have my food forest or the beginnings of a food forest. So uh, lots and lots of different plants in here right now, nice and green, but I might want to go ahead and give them a, a little hand in here just starting out. Uh, last year they didn't get any water and I had fairly significant losses. So this year I might do a little soaker hose in here and maybe give them a shot of water from time to time. And I don't want to run the well dry. So the IBC totes, the 1200 gallons will help a good bit here. So I will be taking videos as this project progresses here. Counting up. Okay. Hey guys, it's Todd here. Uh, working on gutters again and uh, rain catchment system. So one of the things I had an issue with last week was the gutter material itself. And as you see, one, both of these are the same size. Obviously you get that when you make a cut. So you want one side to go in the other. Basically you want the side coming from the water to go inside of the other one. Uh, and the way to do that, previously I was taking a pair of needle nose and I was bending in the center and doing all kinds of stuff. But I saw something on YouTube last week that makes it much easier is you take, go to each corner and you bend it in like that. So let me come to this side, bend it in, bend it in, 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 and in. Bend that down a little bit. So now that will allow me to put this piece in and you still have to maneuver it in a little bit, but it fits in. So water flowing in this direction will go right in. If it was water was flowing in the other direction, it would on the top or the bottom, it would be coming out of the seam. So that's why the water, the flow of direction you want going into the other side. Okay guys, this is the end of day one. I have four IBC totes in place, had them leveled. I got all the blocks here. I, all the blocks are leveled. I use a laser level to make sure that all of the blocks are within a half an inch of each other all the way across. So when I connect them up, the all four totes will be level because they will all be connected at the bottom. So real quick, what I got done today is I put in the gutter guard up on top, extended the gutter over, went into the rain diverter, and then I have the downspout mostly in. I still have some more work to do that on that down at the bottom. Up at the top I had the leaf eater in and directly below the leaf eater you see the tube coming all the way down here. That is the uh, first flush system and when it fills up uh, then it goes off to the left hand tube there, comes over and that goes into this tote. And over on this side I have a mirror image but opposite of the same thing and everything is all set. We were in a big rush to get this much done here because we're, they're calling for an inch of rain tonight. So uh, I could very, I need to check the calculations, but I could very well fill one of these IBC totes up. After dinner, if I, with any luck, I might get some of the 
two inch pipe connecting these together uh, just in case I do fill one. So uh, that is what I have done for the first day's work. If you are interested in and you're not sure what the leaf eater is, the diverter up there, or the first flush system, yeah, I will post in the show notes today, but you can go to uh, greatescapefarms.com and uh, I have a post that I put up earlier this week on uh, this entire system at my father-in-law's house. So I also have a YouTube video on that. It fully explains all of these devices. One other thing I didn't, I haven't explained yet is you can see right there, you can see the purple. So I have it glued up at the top and coming down to that point. After that, I don't have it glued and it's just kind of, kind of laying here right now. So it, this is not the way that I want it to be final. It's just the way that it's in here right now because I want to catch the rain tonight. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it final, but this should be enough to get the rain going for us. So that's it for now. Hopefully I can get some pictures tomorrow in the rain. So I'm doing a real quick rain check here. Overnight we had a good bit of rain. So I've got my water gauge here. And as you can see, we got almost one and a quarter inches of rain last night. So by my calculations, that actually should have both barrels overflowing with water. Uh, I calculated that one inch of rain would give me 675 inches or 675 gallons of water. And I have 600 gallons in capacity right now. I will have 1200 once I get everything connected together, but I only have two of the totes, totes hooked up right now. So we'll run out back and get a quick video on how much water we got. So this is cool. I, I like it when I actually get to test something out right away. Okay, so as predicted, I have one tank full, one not quite, and I'll have to look into it and see what's happening there. But you can see this first tank is full. The reason the tank next to it is empty is I just don't have the plumbing down at the bottom here connected together yet. Hopefully I'll get that done later today. Maybe I can get a video while I do that. Once I do it, you'll see this level go down to half and that one come up to half. They should equalize out. So I did a laser level and all the way across these four are equal so once I get everything hooked up here they they should all four have exactly the same height and that brings to bear the next issue I'm gonna have to deal with is an overflow mechanism because as you can see I'm just leaking out and coming right in here and I'm just kind of uh, I see it streaming I don't know if the video can pick it up but I see it streaming down here so I don't want it dumped right here so I will come up with a an overflow mechanism so I can alleviate the water and get it away from here. I mean, again, I'm in very, very clay soil and when clay gets wet, it's like quicksand. It just sucks things in. So I want to keep it as dry as I can and dumping water here is not the way to do it. So if you notice, let me come back here. This tank is full and this one is not quite full. And uh, so I'm coming off the same roof, different sides. That could be explained if I had windblown rain or something like that. But I noticed another issue is right down here. I don't have anything coming out of my first flush system and I should have a little bit of water coming out of there. This one over here, I, I hope you can see that. I'm not seeing it too well here, but from my, let me get a little closer. I have a steady stream of water coming out, out of this. So what I'd like to do is find a smaller hole for this first flush system. And this one over here, I'm gonna have to open it up and try to figure out what exactly is going on with it. Because right now, it to me, it looks like it's clogged. So with all the filters and everything else I have going on, it shouldn't be clogged. But I don't wanna mess with it right now because there's a lot of water in there and that, that there's a lot of pressure on this down, downward piece. So uh, somehow we got blocked there. I'm not sure exactly how, but whatever. Uh, we'll go ahead and fix that. Anyhow, I will have more videos added on to this one, showing you the progress for the day. My goal for the day is to connect all of these together, and I think for an overflow connect, an overflow system what I could do is just kind of have 
all of these connected horizontally and have on one end a vertical that comes up to the level I want and just kind of do a, a hoop over and then I'll drill a hole in top because I don't want to create a vacuum that sucks all the water out but just uh, so that once I hit a certain level it kind of leaks out and then I can take that pipe and run it off somewhere else so, so I will look at that a little bit later today and hopefully tie it onto this video if I can get all that in this weekend one final view of everything here and that's it okay guys I've been busy doing some plumbing here as you can see the tank on the right here is still full of water on the left hand side we're empty and we're gonna resolve that issue in just a minute I did over here you can see those are equal and what I let me start on this side so what I have is right here I have a garden hose faucet I'm connected in here I have a, a quick disconnect so I can disconnect this stuff very easily during the winter time and drain everything so I'll just lock this off uh, do the quick disconnect here I have a quick disconnect on each one and I have these uh, flexible couplings here which I can disconnect so this piece right here will be what maybe four foot long by about uh, three or four foot wide so that'll be easy for me to store instead of having everything put together so I uh, tried to design this well. well we'll see as time goes along here but I did put a valve here so I can have a separate system so this system can be by itself with just the garden hose here uh, this so what I did is I have this valve shut off. I opened up these two and as you can see they equalized and they are Exactly the same level, which is exactly what I wanted and what I expect and what I expect to see once I open that one up So I'll open that up let those two Equalize then I will open this one and that would should have all four of them Equalized together. So hopefully that'll work. This over here is my overflow. So what I did, if you notice, the opening of the 90 is down below. So I'll lose a couple inches of water here. So I'm not going to get the full 12, 1200 gallons, but that will prevent water from just randomly leaking all over the place up here. So I will put in another 90 going down and some other things. I'll do a separate video on my uh, water, my overflow and my water escape there. Let's see, what else did I want to explain? When I first opened up the valves here and got the water going to come into this one it was coming really really fast but then it kind of slowed up and i realized that the tank was bulging well i had the uh, lid on up here so it was pressurized so i didn't even think about it but what i'm going to have to do is put a screen on all four tanks and leave them open or do something with the lids but i want to keep the lids intact so that during the winter i can put the lids on and prevent water and stuff from getting in there so it won't freeze up on me so i'll empty them in the late fall put the lids on that'll keep the water and stuff out and then it's ready for the springtime so i i'll just uh put some spring over it or some uh, uh screen netting over it and uh, again i'll do a video in a little while I'll show you guys how i'm going to do that basically uh some vinyl uh, screen over top of this. I'm just gonna put a wire tie around it. It only has to get me through the, the one season here. So uh, Let's see. I'm all set. That is this piece is locked. Oh one other thing. So this is a self-contained system over here Over here. I have another It's not self-contained uh, If you notice I don't have the valve going down, but because I have the one over there it is separate from that right now and I also have the uh, the flexible coupling right here. So the longest piece that I have is the straight piece in the center here. And that is, let's see, that was 36. So that is 13 foot, uh, a 10 foot section plus 36 inches. And so I'll disconnect this coupling and that coupling in the winter. I, I'll dig this up right now. If you'll notice, there's a trench there. So I'll cover this up and uh, in the center here will be underneath. Uh, so I'll dig this up in the fall, then I'll have three sections, the long straight section, the section down there, and I'll have this one right here. And if you'll notice, this end is just kind of dead-ended, left open here. I'm going to have a pressure tank hooked up, and once you get into pressure tanks and uh, very, very intricate plumbing, I'm calling a plumber in to deal with that. So he'll hook up a pressure tank, a pump for me, and a 
I forget what it's called, some kind of a cutoff switch or a cutoff valve so that if these tanks go empty, it doesn't burn out the, the motor on me. So let's see, let me remove this cap first. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Okay, that is open. I will open this valve. And this is the empty tank, and then this is the full one. So here we go. Here water running. Hopefully I don't see it running out everywhere. And it's going in to fill that one up. I don't see it yet, but I certainly hear it. And I don't see any water coming out of any of my couplings here. And you can see this one up here, it's steadily going down as it's leveling off into the other one. And as I come back to this side, you can see I'm already up a couple inches there. I'm up above the valve. So my level is right there right now and going, going up. So I'm not going to bore you on this video while this happens. I'll catch another video later once I get some more work done here. Okay guys, I am done with this project for the weekend. Uh, I have four totes here tied together. Could have been close to 1200 gallons the way I have the drain, the overflow over there. I'm probably closer to 1000 gallons, somewhere between 1000 and 1200. But as you can see, if you look at the water level going across here, I am level. So the laser level was perfect here. Everything is tied together now on one system. So if I get any amount of water in one tank, it will evenly spread across all tanks here. So some of the things I've done since the last video, let's see, down, down here you'll see there's a tube going in, it kind of just lets out here. That's temporary for right now until I, I have my downspout here coming down. So I have the downspout and the first flush system. Downspout will only be used in the fall, but I'm going to tie a black, I don't know what you call it, landscape uh, pipe or something like that for uh, uh, downspout and gutters. And I'll run that down and run it off. And what I'm going to do is, there's the bottom of my first flush, the little nipple, and that's where I have the uh, pipe coming out of. So I will tie this pipe into the black hose that's coming from the gutter here and I have the same thing going on the other side there so that's a future project for right now it will do good enough as far as up here I uh, my father-in-law found that in this cap itself there was a uh, there is a system set up for venting it wasn't set up for venting so i just poked a hole in something and allowed it to vent so there's a little hole right here and there's like a little filter system in here and then it will allow this uh this tank to vent so i did that on this one and on the other side so i'm happy about that i don't have to leave it open with a screen we added a screen to this side right here uh i'm sorry to the uh, the spouts coming in and that would prevents bugs and stuff like that from getting in. So this is just a nylon screen with wire ties or tie wraps or uh, whatever you call them. There's many different names for them. And uh, I have four of those tie wraps tied together here holding the screen on. And over here, same thing on this side. I have wire ties going on now. As I said in yesterday's video these uh, uh this tube coming down right here is not permanent so nothing is glued well i shouldn't say nothing uh most joints are not glued here i do have a couple of key ones like that one right there because too much water coming down would have pulled it off but uh, i i am not sure exactly what i'm going to do with the final piece here but for right now i can catch water obviously it works because i got uh what do i end up with over 600 gallons of water here overnight and you'll see that this valve is open. If you remember, that valve ties the two systems together. I went ahead and buried the line going across here. I completed the overflow here. So my water level will be, what is that? That's probably about three or four inches below the top here. And that's just to uh, account for any measurements that I'm off across the four tanks here. So what will happen is if the water level in this tube right here rises, so right now the water level 
in this tube is right about here, which is the same level as the water in the tote. As the water in the tote comes up, it also comes up in the tube here. Once it reaches this level, it will go over, it'll come down, and I have a piece of pipe underneath the ground that lets out right here. So it just kind of lets it out and go into the landscape. On a regular rain where I just get a little bit of drizzle, that's not a big deal. Uh, because I am down lower, I could create a siphon. So it's not a big deal with a little bit of rain. But if we got a downpour and there was a lot of rain, I would have a siphon issue and I could theoretically drain all four of these tanks out of this once the siphon is created. So to prevent that from what hap from happening, what I did is I drilled one, two, three, four, five holes here uh, in between, right at the very top section. And then I put a screen around it and I wire tied the screen in so that no bugs could get into my water system there. So that will prevent any siphoning from happening in a downpour situation. And out here at the very end, you can see I have a screen wire tied there, so that will prevent bugs or anything from getting into my water system. So I believe that is all I have right here. If I do come up with anything else, I'll add it in the show notes or maybe do another video, but this is all I plan on doing right now.